there is no more breathtaking object in the solar system than the sixth planet Saturn. Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system and the most distant planet visible to the naked eye. And in this video, we are going to capture it through my Celestron Astromaster 114 EQ Reflector Telescope. Saturn shines with a slightly yellow color when viewed through naked eye. It is currently located in the constellation of Aquarius. We'll get the best view of Saturn when it reaches opposition on 27th August 2023. This will be the time when Saturn will be located closest to Earth. During this opposition, the Saturn's ring will be fully illuminated by sun's rays. But till that time, I guess we'll have to wake up early in the morning to see this beautiful planet. So now let's discuss how I'm going to capture the planet. I will be using this telescope to capture Saturn, which has a focal length of 1000 mm. We'll use an uh, eyepiece of 10 mm, which will give us a 100x magnification. Saturn's rings appear at around 30x magnification, so 100x is more than enough to capture Saturn. Plus, we'll also use the digital zoom of our mobile camera. However, I can also use this 6mm eyepiece, but it will give us a magnification of 166x, which is too much to capture Saturn. I mean because uh, the field of view of this uh, 6mm eyepiece is very low. And as my telescope is a manual telescope, a small field of view means a lot of terrible tracking. As my telescope is a manual telescope, it will be very difficult for me to keep Saturn in frame. So now I will demonstrate why it's very difficult to use lower focal length eyepiece with your mobile adapter. Now suppose this is the field of view of the eyepiece and as your mobile phone camera is going to be slightly above your eyepiece, your field of view in your mobile will be just this much. Due to this there will be two problems. First, the planet will be moving a lot faster due to Earth's rotation and you won't be able to take longer videos of the planet for stacking. We'll be using my mobile camera of Redmi Note 8 Pro to capture videos of planet Saturn. Well, you may ask a question. Why videos not a single photo of Saturn? Well, because we'll stack all the frames of a video and create one single photo from that. We'll talk about this later in this video when I'll show you how to stack a video. I'll be using this cheap mobile adapter to uh, attach my mobile camera through this telescope. If we directly capture videos using our mobile camera, we get videos like this. That is a really overexposed shot. That's why we'll be using pro video camera mode. But my phone does not have this, therefore I'll be using a mobile app called ProCam X for Pro Mode in videos. So now, let's go and capture Saturn. So here I am on my terrace and sun is setting in there in the west and there you can easily spot planet Venus. Saturn will rise at around 10.30 pm so I'll have to wait till then. Actually I'll have to wait till midnight because at around midnight Saturn will be located high above the horizon and above all that wobbly dense part of the atmosphere near the horizon. So now Saturn is high above the horizon and there it is through my telescope's 10mm eyepiece. You can pause the video and look at the camera settings. You can clearly see the rings and even some atmospheric features of Saturn. I then captured Saturn for about an hour and these are some of the best raw videos that we collected. Now, we have completed the first phase of our journey, capturing. Now let's move on to processing. To process these videos, we'll need three free softwares. PIP or Planetary Image Preprocessor, AutoStacker and Registack 6. I'll just give you an overview of editing in this video, but trust me, that would be enough for you to process your own planetary images. So now, we'll open PIP. PIP's main function is to stabilize the video that we got. In the raw video that we get, we can see that Saturn is moving out of frame due to Earth's rotation. But 
we will make sure that this will remain in the center. So as you can see Saturn is moving out of frame at, and we will make sure that this remains in center. First we will open our video on pip, we will just drag and drop our source file here. So this is the output frame that we will get. We will close this. Now make sure that uh, you have selected optimize options for planetary. Now we will select batch mode here not join mode because we are only using one source file. If we will use multiple source files we will use join mode. Moving on to input options we will leave them to default. Then processing options, object planetary, then object detection, enable object detection. Now remember only select this when your object is large like Jupiter, Saturn etc. This will not work with small objects like Neptune and Uranus or Mercury. Now we will make sure that we center our object in each frame by uh, tick on, ticking on this. So here we can see that it's auto object detection threshold. So we will test detection threshold and this is the area that will uh, that pip will uh, process so as you can see the this is exceeding the limits of planets rings and its surface so we need to reduce this so we'll deselect auto object detection threshold and manually uh, increase the object detection threshold i'll do it at 12 now test options we can see it now it's okay it's only around the planet and its rings so now we'll enable cropping we can uh, uh, change the x-axis and y-axis height and width here so like uh, this is of around 450x and y now we'll go to output options and make sure that our output format is avi so this is important as output formats need to be avi if we need to further uh, process our image on auto stacker then we'll go to do processing and select open output folder when complete and after all this we'll click on start processing so auto stacker is currently processing 105 frames of our video so uh, this is in a new folder where we had our video a new folder has been created with the name of pip so here in this video we can see that the planet is now located in the center of the video so pip has done its work now let's move on to our next software auto stacker auto stacker will stack all our best frames of our video into a single image to start our processing with auto stacker we'll first open our processed video on auto stacker we'll just drag and drop our pip processed file into auto stacker and then we'll put a tick on planet then normalize stack 70% to normalize brightness then on RGB align to reduce atmospheric distortion and you can also tick on sharpened if you want a sharp image and then we'll click analyze after analyzing all the frames the program will sort them by quality and now you need to select the percentage of frames to stack don't do it 100% here because some of our frames at the end of our video are going to be really bad so I generally use 25% 30% or 75% frames for further processing now we'll place some alignment points we can either place them manually or let auto stacker place them you can change the alignment size from here I suggest click on 24 and then place them manually we can place an alignment point by left clicking on the screen and remove an alignment point by right clicking on it we need to place alignment points at all the important data points like rings and cloud bands so finally we have placed all the alignment points and now we can click on stack after processing on auto stacker is complete we'll have three folders here in the same folder where we had our pip file so let's see what's the result of stacking and here you can see that the image has quite a bit improved and here's the sharpened file we can already see some cloud bands here this is the southern equatorial belt I know you are not still satisfied by the result but trust me we can make this image a lot better by using the next software called Registack 6. So now we have opened Registack 6 and now we need to uh, we are going to use the 50% image we can also use this 20% but I think the 50% is or okay I'll use 
So we'll just drag and drop our image here. So this is the place where real magic happens. So now it has asked to stretch intensities and we'll click yes. Then we go to the wavelets tab here to perform our final editing. To increase the quality of this image, we need to move the sliders in this direction. So this step varies for every image. So you need to experiment yourself here by using different schemes. Okay, this is too much. I will suggest that don't take this to too much here. Like don't take this to this to the slider to a hundred, or your image will become very grainy. We can either use linear, default, or Gaussian. But I'll say experiment as much as you can here because who knows the wavelet layer which is the best for your image. So I think this is good. Now we'll go to RGB align and we'll place this green box around our planet like this and click estimate here. After this, we'll balance our color balance our image by going here RGB balance. So now we'll click on RGB balance and click on auto balance. This is going to improve the color of your planet a little bit. Now when you are done adjusting the wavelets, select do all here and save your image. And now your image is ready. These are the final results that we get. So this was a raw video that we collected from a mobile camera. This was the raw video and we turn this into this. So this video was made by Pip. So as you can see that this difference is quite clear. Then we stack the image and made that image into something like this. Still it's a little bit fuzzy. And now the results, the final results. So let's start from here. So this is our first result. So we can clearly see the cloud band here. This is the southern equatorial belt. And this was our overexposed shot. I increased the brightness a lot here. This. So my favorite is this one. And this one also. So now let's talk a little bit about what we have captured in this image. At least we should know what we have captured, what actually what details we have captured in this image. So the darker region here is the southern equatorial belt and it's on the top because our image is inverted. So south is on the top and north is on bottom. Furthermore, if you notice this part, below the ring is darker than this part. That's because Saturn's rings are casting shadow on planet's atmosphere. And moreover, this region over ring is also a little bit darker than this region. Now that's because here planet is casting a shadow over its rings. So now I'm going to tell you our most amazing observation. If you are following my channel since January, you must be knowing that I captured this image of Saturn in the month of December last year. Can you notice a small difference between these two images? The rings were slightly more white in December, but now they are a little bit thin. This is because of the rotation of planet around sun. You can understand it by using this animation. And a fun fact, Saturn's ring will not be visible in the year 2025 because they will be parallel to our line of sight. I mean isn't that amazing that what we have captured through this telescope just by sitting at our homes. I mean this planet is the second largest planet in our solar system just 15% smaller than Jupiter but is 1.3 billion kilometers away from us. That's a lot of distance. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video will help you to capture this true lot of the rings.